It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. The Labour Party in the UK is having another leadership battle, this time between Jeremy Corbyn and Owen Smith. The results of the election will become public on Saturday, September 24th at the start of the Labour Party's annual conference. But deep within the very fraught state of the Labour Party, there is a movement growing called Momentum. It's a movement that is similar to our revolution here in the U.S., launched by those who supported Bernie Sanders' campaign. While both of these movements have been loyal to their leaders, they want much more. On to discuss momentum and the movement behind it is Leo Panich. He is the author of many books, including the winner of the UK Deutsche Book Prize, The Making of Global Capitalism, The Political Economy of the American Empire. And more re relevant to this discussion is The End of Parliamentary Socialism, from new left to new labor. Leo, good to have you with us. Hi, Sharmini. So, Leo, uh, you are on your way to Liverpool to participate in a forum being organized on the sidelines of the upcoming Labour Party annual conference by Momentum. Uh, what is Momentum? Tell us about it. Momentum was uh, formed last October uh, in the wake of Jeremy Corbyn's very surprising election to the leadership of the Labour Party, uh, when for the first time uh, the party had an electoral system that looked a bit like a primary, uh, insofar as uh, new members could sign up and vote in that uh, election for the leader and supporters could. Uh, and uh, Jeremy, to the great surprise and dismay of uh, most of the Labour MPs, uh, uh, won that election. And momentum was formed uh, by the people who helped organize the Corbyn leadership campaign in order to keep those people who had joined as supporters and as new members, including the almost 100,000 trade union activists, who had joined uh, in that process, uh, to keep uh, a link with them, uh, and more importantly, out of a realization that the Labour Party at the base is a decrepit institution, that the constituency Labour Parties are not centers of community life. Uh, and, and the weakness of the Labour Party electorally reflects that. Um, and, and Momentum, therefore, was designed to stay, keep links with those who had joined, uh, those uh, who had become supporters, those who were active in the communities in various social movements, housing organizations, progressive activities, uh, to link up with them, not in order instrumentally necessarily to bring them into the Labour Party alone, uh, but to join with them in making people's lives better at a local level. That's what Momentum was designed uh, to do. Leo, now the Labour Party is very fraught at the moment. There has been a severe split in the party leading up to this leadership election. So within this framework, what does Momentum want to achieve? What are their goals and how do they interact with the party at the moment? Well, their goals are precisely to link up uh, social activism across the country uh, with political education across the country and yes to link that to electing a eventually uh, a labor government uh, that reflects that kind of politics Corbyn's leadership and he goes back all the way to the Bennite movement and the campaign for labor party democracy in the 1970s uh, when Ben used to say, if you can't democratize the Labour Party, you can't democratize the British state. Corbyn was around for that and has been an MP since 1983, never having stepped back from that. Um, uh, th this is designed to link up that kind of politics with a Corbyn-led Labour Party. Uh, this is, of course, uh, difficult at two levels. One, insofar as momentum is working with activists in communities, some of whom belong to more left-wing parties, um, who are engaged with 
social movement activity, with anti-war activity, etc. Uh, momentum is traduced as uh, you know, working with people who belong to other parties and who, of course, traduced by the right and in the press as working with people who are socialists, heaven forbid, who are militant, who are hard left, etc. The other danger is, is that momentum, of course, gets pulled constantly into the fight inside the Labour Party, the fight against Corbyn inside the Labour Party, the fight against the left inside the Labour Party. And that's deeply entrenched uh, with a very uneven balance of power amongst the uh, members of parliament, the Parliamentary Labour Party, and also deeply entrenched inside the party apparatus with its full-time regional organizers and agents uh, who represent the very old and staid Labour Party. And this, uh, you know, momentum is constantly pulled, therefore, towards uh, trying to shift the balance inside the party. And that means that their activities and their resources get pulled into an intra-party fight rather than building this broader democratic socialist movement that would support a Corbyn-led Labour Party uh, uh, outside. The danger is that activists will see or that ordinary people will see that as, you know, a fight inside this decrepit institution rather than get excited about linking up the Labour Party to change society. Right. And who's leading this movement? Who are some of the uh, faces, figures? Well, it's, it, it has 17,000 members. It has 100 local groups. Uh, its founder is a man called John Landsman, who I first knew as a 23 or 24-year-old, amazing organizer with the Campaign for Labour Party Democracy, in uh, the 1970s. Uh, he's now a man in his 60s. Uh, who knows? He could become General Secretary of the Labour Party. He was a key organizer of Corbyn's campaign last summer and again this summer. Uh, but with him are a lot of young people, uh, some of whom I also know well, uh, very much committed to this kind of politics. Um, and and uh, you, know, you can see them at every local level. Uh, they can be young anarchists uh, who joined, uh, inspired by Corbyn, and want to use the local Labour Party as a means of getting better public housing or better service for people in uh, public housing uh, or rent control, that kind of thing. Um, uh, they have some 50 paid organizers working on Corbyn's campaign. Uh, they're hoping to keep some 50 or 20 on staff after Corbyn's re-election uh, in order to do that outward organizing. Um, they have set up a, uh, 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 I think it's called a labor organizing academy, uh, where they hope to train some 5,000 people on how to do community organizing of the kind that I'm talking about, as well as effective election campaigning. Um, you know, that's a tall order. Uh, but it's an impressive one, and one that one hopes the the uh, Sanders movement would be uh, engaged in as well in, in the months and years to come. Now, Leo, uh, Jeremy Corbyn is being covered very negatively in the mainstream press in the UK. And this element, momentum and some of the left uh, and extreme left, radical left coming on board only helps feed uh, that resistance on the part of the mainstream media. How do you respond to that and how do you counter that? It's very difficult to counter. Uh, I call this leaking into the public urinal. And this is what uh, Labour members of Parliament, right-wing trade union leaders uh, uh, did back in the 1970s and 80s at the time of the Benite movement. Uh, these people know who they are ideologically, just as those who oppose Sanders inside the Democratic Party knew who, know who they are ideologically. They are anti-socialists. And some of uh, the most vicious type of anti-communism, not capital C anti-communism, but old-style McCarthyite anti-leftism, often comes from social democrats. You know, the bitter divisions in the labor movement 
between uh, people who followed uh, the revolutionary road or the reformist road to socialism. Um, and, and they go to the press, they go to the right-wing press, they go to the labor press. The Guardian is most open to this in order to spread lies and calumnies uh, about people who uh, they see have a potential because of the base of the Labour Party as members who are so sympathetic to democratic socialism. When they see that these people have the potential to actually turn the Labour Party into a socialist party, they will go to any lengths to divide it. Thatcher won in 1983 originally, uh, not because she was so popular, and not even because of the Falklands Wars nationalism, but because of the way the center-right in the Labour Party was prepared to divide the party up to the day of the election. And a divided party, of course, can't win elections. Um, you know, people and won't And so do you think that's it. the fate for the upcoming election where I, the new I'm leader afraid, of the Labour Party will have to contest? I, 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 it will be Corbyn, for sure. I mean, it's very clear that he's going to get over 60% of the vote again. Uh, but And that will mean it will be a divided party. Corbyn is, of course, speaking in terms of, I will unite the party, I have a plan to uh, bring people back on board, etc. But so long as he maintains a radical perspective, and let's get make this clear. This is no more radical than what Sanders was was uh, espousing. Uh, it's no more radical than any of the radical left parties in Europe, whether De Linka in Germany or uh, uh, Syriza in Greece uh, uh, or Podemos in Spain. Um, but but they will treat this as though it's madness, uh, ultra left madness. Um, and it a lot it has to do not only with the policies, or even not mainly with the policies, has had to do with the expectation on the part of parliamentary parties that parliamentarians should not be challenged by their grassroots, that people should meekly go out for vote for them every four or five years, and then let them get on with being part of the establishment, uh, being respectable within the framework of the mainstream media, uh, being on board with the American empire when it comes to Trident and NATO, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, uh, and uh, Leo, how relevant uh, is this uh, momentum movement to what's going on here in our revolution in the U.S.? Uh, well, people should understand that there isn't a revolution in the United States. Our revolution refers, of course, to the Sanders organization that's been created in the wake of uh, Hillary defeating him in the primary campaign um, as, as a means of keeping an organization going after the election. Uh, and one oriented to getting people involved in politics at every level, local, state, national, etc., uh, to democratic socialist purposes, uh, to building political capacities uh, at every level. And I think that they were looking at momentum when they created this. In fact, I'm sure they were. Um, and it, it offers a good example, I think. Um, one might hope that, that in some senses the, uh, our revolution would be less tied in to the Democratic Party uh, than uh, uh, the momentum people are tied into the, the Labour Party, partly because uh, it's even less likely the Democratic Party will be turned into a democratic socialist organization. Uh, then the Labour Party will. Um, uh, but we'll and you're have saying to see. that because the Labour Party has had a history of yes, being a more I socialist mean, party. Exactly. The Labour Party's original commitment in 1918 uh, was for public ownership of the means of distribution, production and exchange. Uh, and it's, it had, a, it's had a, a much deeper and longer tradition as a party organically linked to the British working class rather than the, the Democratic Party's more elite linkage with uh, the AFL-CIO. Uh, that said, I mean, the two, the two things are similar, and the Labour Party recently has not been any different from the Democratic Party in its political orientation and government and in the orientation of most of its uh, leadership, uh, members of parliament and so on. Uh, so it, it is similar. You're right to ask it. I think this does have to do... Uh, with immense changes that are taking place 
in party organizations now, which are being infused uh, by young people uh, uh, who will no longer tolerate the type of undemocratic practices uh, whereby members of parliament get elected and then simply rely on people for 30, 40 years to keep them in office uh, with local parties that are ciphers, that don't have any link to progressive change where people live. So I think this is very, very important. Um, and, and I think that both uh, Sanders' Our Revolution and this memor uh, Momentum campaign uh, organization will hopefully lead the way to a new kind of politics. I think it would likely mean a split in these parties. And it's certainly, if it's with such a split, uh, those parties can't be thinking uh, in terms of just the next election. When this is a long-run, patient process, um, as as a, a famous Canadian left political columnist that you know, Charmini, Rick Salutin, said in the Toronto Star uh, last week, uh, we're talking about a slow revolution. <laughs> so our revolution is going to have to be a slow revolution. All right, Leo. As always, I thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Charmini. Good to talk to you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.